In this video, I'll follow from my previous video where I demonstrated how to calculate the Mann-Whitney U test. Uh, but in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate how the U test plays a role in the tau U statistic that is formulated by Parker, Van Est, Davis, and Sauber in 2011 in their paper from that year. I've got the data that they use as a walkthrough example. The data are arranged right here. And again, in my previous video on the Man Witten U test, I demonstrated how to calculate the U statistic and the Z score for the U statistic. So I'm going to skip past some of this. I just want to point out that we have the raw data here for phase A and for phase B and the rankings that are set up. If you want to see how those rankings were made, please refer to the previous video on the Man Whitney U. I calculated the U statistic using this formula. The lower U is 2, the upper U is 18. And using the Z-test formula, uncorrected for ties, I calculated the Z-test for this Man Whitney U to be negative 1.95 958. Just a little bit shy of statistical significance of the traditional 1.96 positive or negative z-score value. Now if I enter the data into SPSS, I get a z-score or z-test value of 2.002. Let me show you that. I've got the data set up here. Phase A is group 1, phase B is group 2. Now one thing might be occurring to you as I mention this, that with single case design research as the type presented by Parker and colleagues, it's a single individual measured at phase A and phase B, at two, you know, two different uh, uh, intervention phases, baseline and, and treatment for example. So we don't have two different groups. In other words, we're sort of violating the assumption of the man Whitney U test that we have two different groups. So keep that, you know, keep that thought in your mind. It's kind of an important thing. Keep that thought in your mind as I go through the example. So to get the U, the man Whitney U and the associated Z test, we go to analyze nonparametric legacy dialog two independent samples following this pathway. We take group and put that into the grouping variable. It's like with an in independent samples t-test. We're going to input the numbers of the groups, group 1 and group 2. Group 1 is baseline or phase A. Group 2 is intervention or phase B. And again, they're not really different groups. It's the same person being measured multiple times for this example. Now, be that as it may, I'm going to show you how this applies to the uh, Tau U statistic online calculator by Parker and colleagues. I take my dependent variable, which is score, I put it up here in the test variable list. The Man Whitney U test is already checked. I run it and you can see that it gives me some results. Here's the Man Whitney U value the uh, it only gives me one of the u's it doesn't give me the upper u only the lower u y u and it also gives me the z test where z equals negative 2.002 and the p value is 0 0.045 so traditionally level uh, the traditional level of significance it is considered significant However, you can see down here, if you do not use the correction for ties, this last value, this last p-value is not significant. So that's this one, not corrected for ties. So we go back to the document. That value that is not significant when it's not corrected for ties, that is this value. This is the Z formula for the Man Whitney U without the correction for ties. So that is what SPSS is pumping out as, as the last value 
right here. The 0 0.063, that's the p-value for this uh, z-score. It's just barely shy of being significant. But if we use the correction for tithes, and I, I'm going to come back to this because this actually plays a role in what I'm going to show you. So keep that, uh, stick a pin in that, keep that in, your, in the back of your mind. I'm going to use the uh, correction for ties now. And again, I demonstrated all of this in my previous video. The correction for ties uses the uh, number of tied values cubed minus the number of tied values divided by 12. And you do that for each set of ties. For the Parker data, which I'll just call this because it's from their paper from 2011. For the Parker data, we have the value of 3 showing up twice, it's tied, and it, the tied ranking is 2.5, it shares that same tie for each value of 3. The value of 5 shows up 3 times, so it's a 3-way tie, its tied ranking is 6. So the sum of the ties, sum of capital T, you take the uh, first tie, which is 3, it has the value 2.5, it's tied twice. So the 2 right here in the formula simply represents um, a raw score value that got tied twice. There are two values there that were tied. Whereas this one over here, that represents the... I'm, just, I'm trying to highlight just the 3. There we go. That's the score of 5, of which there are three fives. There are three tied rankings there. So you take the number of tied rankings, cube it, subtract the number of tied rankings, and then divide by 12. You do that for each tied ranking, and that's the adjustment that you make to the formula. And that goes in, in the denominator, where you see the sum of capital T. When you compute this out, as you can see that I've done, where n1 is the sample size for group 1, n2 is the sample size for group 2, or a number of observations, capital N is the total number of observations. Um, when you calculate that out, you get the exact z-score that SPSS gave us. Let's just go and take a look and make sure. There it is, negative 2.002. So we know that we're on the right track. That's where I stopped my previous video. Now let's apply this to the tau u statistic. As presented by Parker, Vaness, Davis, and Sauber, 2011. Their paper is, uh, I, I mean, it's only fair to say it's kind of hard to read it because they're not very clear on what, you're, what they're doing or what they're describing. It took me a few reads to figure it out. And one of, the, one of the things I noticed is that they have uh, an error in the formula. It's a minor typo, but you know, once you see it, you know how it works. So they have a typo in the description of the formula, page 290, column 2, line 12, where the denominator is represented with a difference, minus sign, rather than a plus. The denominator down here has to have a plus. They had a minus on both the numerator and denominator. So again, it's a, it's a minor typo, one which should have been caught during the review process. At any rate, so the calculation here, using the values for the upper and lower U statistic. In their paper, uh, Parker doesn't uh, really go into detail, you know, well, I calculated the upper in this way. Uh, I had to go look up the formula for how to get it because SPSS was not giving it to me. But once you know how to use the formula, it's pretty easy to use. So you get the upper and the lower U statistic. Plug them into the tau U formula that Parker gave us with the typo fixed. And it's 18 minus 2 divided by 18 plus 2. That's it. It's, it's a basic ratio. The upper U minus the lower U divided by the upper U plus the lower U. 
And so the tau u statistic is really nothing more than a modification of the tau u statistic. That's all that it is. Okay, well, let's take a look at how we deal with it using their calculator. So I've got a screenshot here. You can see the 0 0.80 right here. Now, let's open up the calculator. You can see that I've uh, added the data in here. So this part here is the data from Parker et al.'s article. And the second part over here is just some stuff I made up. So, yes, they do have a video on YouTube on how to use single case research calculator. But uh, for my students, I want to I want to demonstrate it myself. It's their video is a little bit hard to follow. So, what we want to do? Let me increase the magnification here a little bit. That's nice. What we want to do is we want to check the baseline contrast to see if there is a trend in baseline. So, with just the baseline for phase, the the first. Let's assume that these are two different people. So BL1 and INT represents the first person, BL2 and INT2 represent the second person. So let me, actually let me put a number one here to make it consistent. Okay, so we want to check the baseline for the first person for a baseline trend. So with just that baseline, hit contrast and now you can see it's baseline 1 versus baseline 1 and we can skip everything else just go down to the z-score you can see that it is not significant so we don't need to worry about baseline trend for the first participant we've got two, two, two people we're going to do this one now we're going to do participant number two check the baseline trend for this one so it's just that one checked hit contrast and now you can see that we have a second baseline versus baseline and it's just looking at the second person now well we have a z-score that's really quite high and I did that on purpose and you can see that the p-value is less than 0.05 so that person has a significant baseline trend and look at the numbers it's two three five six I made it intentionally uh, significant uh, baseline trend for the first person when we compare baseline to intervention phase you click the two of them you do not correct the baseline because for the first one the baseline was not a significant trend so for the, we're going to do these uh, t uh, two different people uh, separately. For the first person, again, there was no significant baseline trend. So I checked the baseline and the intervention phase here, hit contrast. Now I have a comparison of that first individual. And you can see that uh, the tau u statistic is 0.80. And let me just pop back over to the Word document. Oh, that was the Word document. And I'll show you that uh, the calculation is right here. That's from the Man Whitney U upper and lower U. And the 0 0.80, it's right here for the tau U, is simply the ratio of the difference in the upper and lower uh, man Whitney use statistic divided by the sum of the upper and lower man Whitney use statistic so all that it is it's an adjustment of the man Whitney U which is a very old statistic uh, dating to the 1940s Okay, but the calculator's got some bells and whistles, so let's take a look at this. And one of the things that we see here 
is that it also gives us the Z statistic and it says that Z is 0 0.05 which is the traditional level of significance although this this Z score is slightly less than the 1.96 that we need for significance so they're rounding this up they're rounding this the uh, Parker et al online calculator they are rounding up the p-value it is just or I should say rounding it down because the actual p-value we know from SPSS is 0 0.63 that's the uncorrected for ties Z statistic. And that is actually exactly what they're using here for the Parker calculator. They're using the uncorrected Z. How do I know? Let's go back to the document. Because I calculated it back here. Negative 1.959 that's the uh, Man Whitney U Z test uncorrected for ties. And then when we look here, we've got virtually the same identical number for the Z test. So that Z test that you see right here, it's not really the Z test of the tau, it is the Z test of the Man Whitney U uncorrected for ties. However, in their paper, in Parker et al's paper they say that they use the Z test that is corrected for ties. So there is an error in their calculator, in their online calculator. They should, this, Z, this Z score should be uh, negative, well, I guess the negative sign really doesn't matter, uh, it should be uh, 2.002. which would be the, uh, the Man Whitney Z test corrected for ties. At any rate, uh, that's, a, that's kind of a minor quibble. But we, we now know how they obtain the tau U statistic and how they get the Z test based on it. Okay, now what about this other participant? This participant number two had a significant baseline trend. The p-value is 0 0.04. So we're going to use the correct baseline. In other words, we're correcting the baseline trend. Why is baseline trend important? Because in single case design research, if you have a baseline trend that's going up, and then you look at the intervention phase data and it's going up how do you know that that's not just the continuation of the baseline trend adjusting for the baseline trend is one way to deal with that and so we're, what, we're, what we want to know is whether or not this increase over here is what we would have expected had this baseline trend continued on or is this greater than the trend that we would have seen at baseline? So with both of these boxes checked, we checked the corrected baseline function over here because we had a significant baseline trend for this participant number two at baseline. We hit contrast. Now we can go down and see the new set of results. The corrected baseline is right here. BL2 versus INT2. And you can see the tau use statistic is 0.5, and the p-value for this particular individual is not significant. Now, what would have happened had I not done that? Had I ignored the baseline trend? So I'm running it again without the baseline trend, and you can see that the um, oh, it's this one. It's kind of the, the, the results pop up in kind of odd places. So that's this one right here. The one that's bold. And you can see that the p-value for the uncorrected baseline trend phase comparison from baseline to intervention is significant. So if you, if you ignore the baseline trend for participant number two, it looks like there's a significant change from baseline to intervention. 
But if you control for baseline trend, that significant difference disappears. So that's an important consideration. In other words, knowing how to use the calculator is kind of important. So let me let me clear all this stuff out. I'm going to start fresh. You want to do um, baseline one, intervention one, uncorrected because there's no there's no baseline trend. I hit contrast. I get the results there. For baseline uh, number two to intervention number two, there was a significant baseline trend. So for this one, I'm going to hit corrected baseline, hit contrast. Now I have BL1 versus INT1. I have BL2 versus INT2. And with these two checked, check these two lines of data, these two lines of results. And I'm going to hit two weighted. That gives me the weighted average of those two. And this is the combination of the two different individuals. Let's say you wanted to get an overall assessment of whether your intervention works across these two individuals. Well, here's your tau u statistic. Here's the z score. And the z score is made more impressive than just the original one that was marginally significant, this one here. So combining this, let me use my my marker here. Combining this pair of results, where one is marginally significant and one is not significant, leads to something that is pretty highly significant, which is kind of odd. But that's uh, that's the way that this calculator works. So how do we interpret this? Uh, for individual one, there was a, a significant change from baseline for individual two. After uh, controlling for baseline trend, there was not a significant change from baseline. And when you uh, average them together, then there is a significant change. Okay, thanks for watching, and I hope that was uh, useful for you.